to talk about my upbringing it was well i enjoyed my childhood for the most part um i lived with my dad and then i went with my mom's on the weekends um majority of the time my dad was someone who went out into the community and he was just a big part of the community so that reflected what i wanted to do getting older um Everyone around me uh, was either an entrepreneur or they were someone that I didn't want to be. So um, it was either one way or the other. And I was choosing to basically become someone good, someone that was inspirational, someone who was motivational, um, just like my dad. My dad had a very big impact on me, um, on my faith, everything that I believe in today. When I was nine, my father passed away, and that completely changed my life. Um, I did not have a home anymore. I didn't, anything that happened in my life at that time completely changed. Um, I ended up living with, I ended up living with my mom, and she already dealt with mental health issues and her own illnesses. So it changed a lot how me and my siblings lived. So it was hard. And a lot of the things that we went through that was instilled into us was good or bad, but it helped create the person that I am today. To go forward, my oldest brother, um, he lives in Baltimore, Maryland. He came down to come get me and my brother from our mom. And so we lived in Baltimore, Maryland for about a year or so. Um, after a while, since we haven't been around him so long, it, it didn't really work out, I would say. So he chose to bring us back down here and to put us into the foster care system. What he did not know was that the foster care system um, hurt us. And a lot of the times, a lot of people came in and out of our lives, which was painful. And it showed that there was not a lot of people that cared about us. And I would say that the foster care system failed my younger brother. Um, as of today, but I think with me, it had a different approach because I chose in my mind not to be a stereotype. I chose to overcome the past experiences that I dealt with and the past trauma and the past everything. I chose to be someone um, that was not just a black girl foster youth or um, the black girl, her parents died or, you know, any of those things. I was like, I'm more than that. I'm going to be more than that. Um, when I was 16, my mother passed away. She tried her hardest to get us out of the foster system, um, but the foster system made it really hard for her um, to the point where she ended up giving up. But one thing she did do every month, every month get this big bag of clothes and she would send it to me and my sister with hair products, barrettes, and she had this thing to make sure me and my sister twinned. I don't know why, <laughs> but she always did. If she got one thing for me, she got the same thing for my sister. Um, so my mom always tried. My mom was great. My mom was uh, had a big impact on me as well because even though she dealt with her mental illnesses, um, she tried her best to be our mom. And um, so when she passed away when I was 16 years old, uh, it broke my heart. It really did because I lost my dad when I was nine and then I lost her when I was 16. And um, it feels weird to say how you expected it to happen because of the way um kind of like deja vu like when you felt like this was happening um so it was even more emotional it was more painful it was it made me like stop everything i completely stopped everything when it happened and um that's when depression got worse, you know, that's when I started to deal with anxiety and deal with the trauma that happened even when I was growing up or in the foster system and everything. And I had to find an outlet, which was music. I love music ever since I was, 
I can't even remember. I used to sing songs and that's how I got through anything. I would literally make up a song and I would start singing. And that was my way out, I guess. That was my way out of crying. Um, for the longest, I couldn't cry. For the longest, I didn't want to cry because I felt like it was my weakness. Everyone would say, how do you get through it? Everyone would ask me if it was me, I couldn't. Everyone would tell me I would have stopped or I would have did this or I would have did that. They say, you know, all the time, you were so strong to be nine. You know, you are so strong to be 16 and then to keep going. And all I could say is if it wasn't for God, I don't, I don't know where I would be. If it wasn't for music, I don't know how I would have got through anything. All those things created the person that I am today. So uh, I'm very grateful for that. I'm very um, appreciative of everybody that was in my life because a lot of the people um, that actually stayed was checking in with me, was making sure I was all right, especially after um, they heard about my mom. A lot of people were like, like you already lost someone, you know, you already lost someone, now you lost someone else. And um, you're doing so good and to keep going, right? And um, as I kept going, uh, I just learned that your past circumstances cannot determine your future. You can't let it determine your future because that's how you get stuck in the box. That's how you become a stereotype to people. So in high school, that's when I experienced um, what actual mental health issues were and how to actually get through them. Um, when it came to the anger management and the therapy that I went to, went to um, it was not easy. It wasn't easy for me to open up about it to a therapist because it was more for me that they didn't understand. They didn't and I did not have a black therapist either. So <laughs> there was just a lot of disconnect there. Um, but my therapist actually took the time to see what was wrong with me. She took the time to actually see me, which I did not get a lot, lot when I was growing up in the foster system. I didn't really even have a voice either. So for her to actually say like, I'm here for you and I need you to know that, that meant a lot. Um, I don't know why I cannot remember her name at the moment, but she even gave me my first journal and she said, you do music, you do poetry. She said, start writing it down. She said, start writing it down because your words are powerful. And when you write it down, they actually mean something. So she was the first person to tell me about, you know, writing it down and journaling. And that helped me so much because there was times I couldn't talk to someone. I couldn't, I couldn't, it took me so long for me to be willing to even cry to her. So long for like, it took about probably like one, two years to, for me to actually just come in and I would just sit and cry. We wouldn't even say nothing to each other. I would just sit and cry. And she would say at the end, you needed that. And that's when I really started to realize that your tears aren't your weakness. Your tears are actually your breakthrough. Another person I really wanna talk about is my CASA worker, Miss Allison. And simply because she has been there since the very beginning. Seven plus years, Miss Allison has been there for me, for my sister and my brother Jarvis. And there's no one like her. There's no one like her. There was times where I would just call her and she, I don't know if she would know or anything like that, but she would start praying for me instantly. And um, she knew that faith was what is going to keep me going. So that's what um, our relationship was on or based on. And um, just staying close to each other and keeping us together. She kept me and my siblings um, together for all the seven years, there was times we couldn't see each other and she would make a way. Every month, it was birthdays, Christmases, Miss Allison literally made it happen and she didn't have to. When it came to court dates, when it came to um, visits or anything, outings, anything. we The first time I went horseback riding was because of Miss Allison, you know? So I feel like a lot of people don't be able to even get to experience that and because of her, I was able to. Um, I talk about Miss Allison all the time and it's just because 
If it wasn't for her, I probably even wouldn't have my driver's license, <laughs> if I'm being honest. Yeah, Miss Allison, it was book. She taught me how to drive. She made sure I went to permit school. She made sure I had everything that I needed to um, go into adulthood. And she was there every step of the way, no matter what. I would like to say that I am somewhat successful. Um, I am going into the area of entrepreneurship. I am going um, to college to become a family specialist. I would like to stand in the gap for foster youth like they stood in the gap um, for the people that stood in the gap for me when I was in the foster system. Um, hope is very important because if you lose it, it's hard. Hope, because of having hope, you would want to keep going. And every single person gave me hope. 